All right. What's up? Good morning, PT on Ice Daily Show. Happy Thursday. Happy Leadership Thursday. Happy Gut Check Thursday. Uh, this is Jeff Moore currently serving as the CEO of ICE, um, lead faculty for the cervical and lumbar spine divisions. Uh, happy to have everybody here uh, early on a Thursday morning. Uh, sorry if you can see a little blackness under the eye there. I took an accidental elbow at the gym. Got some uh, repercussions for it. So uh, anyhow, happy to see everybody this morning. So Gut Check Thursday. Let's knock that off right off the bat. So we've got a 10-minute AMRAP. Hey, what's going on on Instagram? What's up, Miranda? So we have a 10-minute AMRAP, as many rounds as possible. Okay, we've got an American kettlebell swing, so 53, 35, uh, 10 of those, and then 10 push-ups. So how many rounds can you get through, right, kettlebell swings, going overhead with the American version, and then dropping into 10 push-ups, and then cycling through that over and over? So that's going to be the gut check. So make sure you tag Ice Physio, uh, hashtag Ice Train. I'll probably knock that off here um, right at 9 a.m. this morning. As far as courses go, to get that out of the way, um, if you're looking to grab a CMFA live course, if you're doing the CMFA cert um, or you've been looking to jump into that live course um, to serve uh, CrossFitters and functional fitness athletes better, we've got a couple coming up. One's going to be over at Houston. So down in Texas, um, January 25 and 26, and then one is going to be up in British Columbia with our AMP partners, uh, February 15, 16. So uh, both of those kind of coming up around the corner if you're looking to jump into one of those classes. We just had a massive amount of our online courses uh, fire up, um, so a bunch of our live stuff is now coming at you um, across the country. All right, so what I want to chat about today is this quote that we talk quite a bit about. It's a good one for Leadership Thursday because it's about leading yourself. And that is from the infamous Cameron Haynes, no one cares, try harder. Uh, my, my good friend Alan here was kind enough to send me a Christmas present uh, with that uh, on the shirt. So that quote is across the shirt. Um, it is now my favorite shirt. But uh, what's up, Steve? Good to see you. We love that quote, right? Nobody cares, try harder. Because embodying it, drives your life forward in a lot of positive ways in a lot of different directions. I know it sounds kind of harsh. Hey, what's up, Kelsey? But in reality, it's equal parts empowering and liberating. Because think about the implications. If you're willing to embrace this idea that nobody cares, try harder, right? Think about the ways that it changed your life for the better. Okay, right off the bat, the first one that I think about is how much time and mental energy you save, right? Explaining yourself to others is exhausting and time-consuming. Like coming up with reasons why something didn't shake out well or trying to build a narrative around a failure, like that is very time-consuming, right? And it's exhausting for both parties, right? Because the other person's absorbing that. So, so you're putting a lot of energy and time into manufacturing these narratives about why things didn't go the way you wish they would have, right? The problem is, Outside of your immediate teammates, right, like your immediate teammates, if you're going over game film or something, that might make sense to try and figure out maybe why something didn't hash out. Barring those people, extending out beyond those folks into your general life, nobody cares, right? And, and, and that's, not, that's not trying to sound insensitive. It's just that most of the things we do aren't all that consequential, right? We're glad you're here and, ha and healthy and moving forward, right? Nobody's that caught up in it. Because it isn't any more relevant to their present or future than one, one day you realize it is to yours. Explaining why these failures happen really doesn't have a lot of relevance or pertinence for anybody going forward. So all you're doing is wasting a ton of time and mental energy, things that are very scarce, trying to build these stories around these happenings. And that is not a good use of resources. So when you stop doing it, and you just move on and try harder and realize the explanation is not necessary, you get back all that time and energy, which is a massive win. Okay, number two, it pull, embracing this philosophy pulls away this tendency to find blame outside of yourself. Right? We all love right, Jocko Willink's extreme ownership. Uh, Alan's talked numerous times about that on the podcast before. But it's really when you try to explain yourself to somebody else, that you begin to build these narratives and find villains outside of yourself. And that's a big problem, right? Because when, when you go to explain why something didn't work out, if you give yourself a reason to let yourself off the hook, the human ego will usually help you find it, right? And if you're explaining your failure to somebody else, right, normally you won't find yourself exclusively guilty. The problem with that is if you start finding other reasons for your failure, 
right? Other variables, other people, other circumstances. Once found, your ability to change your behavior and thus change the next outcome is stripped from you. And that's really the crux of this whole problem. That as you're building these narratives of why something didn't work out, it's oftentimes not you that you find at fault, which means it's also not you that cannot let it happen again. So the tendency to make up these stories of why we failed gives us reasons to take the power out of our hands for our next rep. Whereas if we say, look, it doesn't matter. I know I can do better. I'm sure I didn't do perfect. Let me try again better. If we believe that we're driving, that it's on us, that nobody else, nobody else cares anyways, no, no need to make up a huge story. Let's just do better now. If you take that approach, you're driving. And it's the loss of that control that takes away a lot of human beings' abilities to develop. Another one, and I'll only give you a few because I want you to be able to think about these things, is that when you, when you embrace this philosophy that nobody cares, nobody needs to hear my excuses, right? I'll just try harder and get it done. When you embrace that, you stop gauging your success by other people's reactions because you stop looking for them. Right? If you're not telling that story over and over again, engaging somebody else's response, looking for their acknowledgement, approval, and insight, right? when you stop doing that, you stop gauging your success on somebody else's opinion of your behavior, which at some point is massive for human development because you know your navigational buoys better than anybody. I would hope if you're being self-reflective through your life, you know what you were trying to do. You know why you took on that challenge. You know what perfect behavior for your personal journey of development would have looked like. And you can compare that to actual events. But when you start seeking out and telling stories and trying to explain yourself and getting all these other individuals input on it, oh, Jeff, it's okay. You know, you think about this, but everybody else's two cents really begin to cloud the picture of your honest reflection on what happened relative to what would have been perfect. It's your journey. You know best what you were trying to do. You know how actual events compare to that image of perfection. Right? Your ability to look at that and study that and change going forward because of that is oftentimes only clouded by everybody else giving you their interpretation based upon your narrative. When you stop explaining yourself, you stop getting all that input from other people, which means your internal compass enhances in clarity. And there is tremendous power in that in your ability to develop as a human being. So the stopping of seeking somebody else's approval, disapproval, or opinion, it's not that, it's not that other people don't matter. It's just that it's your journey, right? And, and you know what you're trying to do. You, you know the ways you're trying to develop. And your ability to compare actual to that impression of perfect is usually only taken away by a million other opinions in the bus. Think about those three things and how often they are diluted by manufacturing stories that explain away our failures. The time and energy that it takes to come up with these narratives. The fact that as we're doing so, we are very likely to find other factors that influenced Right, or caused our failure and thus take away from our responsibility in it and thus our ability to not let it happen again. And the fact that over time, as we seek all these opinions, we become more dependent on other people's opinions of whether or not what we did was okay versus our actual reflection upon best self and actual self. And that, 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 that internal compass lacking a clarity of focus is what derails most human beings from progressing embracing that nobody cares. They don't need to hear about why you failed or what your interpretation was or who else might have been at fault. We're all moving forward. Nobody cares. Just figure out what your role was. Do better next time. Try harder. Might be the most powerful philosophy I think that anybody can embrace if they're really trying to progress as a human being. And all the reasons I just mentioned are things that tend to cloud everybody's clinical picture. It sounds a bit harsh. In reality, I think it simplifies life. It certainly simplifies human improvement and development, and it certainly takes away a lot of negative feelings of you passing on blame to other folks and losing that locus of control. So it's, think about that a bit and hit me up with comments. I, I know a lot of folks don't love the quote. They think it's too harsh. 
right? But, but think about those different ways that it can improve your life. Um, hit me up with some comments on social media. I'd love to hear about it. We think about it all the time. You'll see me wearing the shirt all the time. Um, let me know your thoughts. So um, as always, uh, ptlnice.com. Um, find us there for any, any courses you want to hit up. Got a bunch of live ones coming up. Um, I'll be down in Orlando next weekend, uh, but that course is pretty full up. Um, and then the CMFA stuff starts the weekend following as well as in February. So hit us up there. Uh, virtual ice is all locked up. That won't be open until March. Um, a lot of good questions on that. And thanks, everyone, for opening up Hump Day Hustling. All right, team, get out of here. Go enjoy your Leadership Thursday. Make sure you do gut check. Make sure you tag us. I'll have my score for you in about two hours. Cheers, everybody. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.